from Get Your Rock Out, talking to the wonderful man who is John Schaefer. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Just uh, busy with interviews, uh, writing songs for the new record. That's what's been going on for the last six or eight weeks, and um, we'll continue on through the summer. So we're our, our goal, our immediate goals are to uh, get together and start rehearsing in uh, in June over in Europe, and, and we're going to be running through the festival set list that we're doing, and then we're going to be doing uh, working on the new songs for the new record, and we will be. We will be tracking and mixing in Europe this summer to, uh, for the next studio album. We should, if we stay on target, it will come out in the latter part of October. If not, it will probably be January next year. Wow, that's an incredibly quick turnaround. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, we have, uh, <clears throat> we have about seven songs done, close to being wrapped up. We have a uh, theme. Artwork is, is starting this week. Um, so oh, everything's good. Wow. Moving, you know, the vision of the whole thing is is pretty much set, and that's a big part of of the process. And if we can get the uh, if we can get the the whole uh, you know packaging and everything done, I believe we can turn it around in time to make the October release. That's that's our goal. That's incredible. Well, fingers crossed that that you do it. I have no doubt that if you're determined to, that it's going to happen. Um, I mean, you guys, you know, you're all in different places, you know, you're in different countries. You find it really quite challenging to be working, uh, you know, so far away from the rest of the band when it comes to the writing. Not really. I mean, it's obviously it would be cool um, if we all lived in the same city. But, I mean, we did that years and years ago. Obviously, it was a different lineup. But, and we, we used to rehearse like three or four nights a week and, um there's pros and cons to it, but the reality is we're all professionals, and if we stay, keep our chops up on our own, um, you know, we we really don't need to be together. You know, we all and, – and we have a very international band right now, so it's yeah. one of the things that it's – it doesn't really matter where we are. Um, you know, we can – the guys the guys share ideas with me. Um you know, they'll send me riff tapes, and if something sparks my interest, then I'll start developing the idea and, and uh, working into arrangements and that kind of thing. And then Stu was just here with me in South America for about six weeks, and we we worked on, um, you know, I was I was working on the music, and, and he was working on vocal melodies and cadences, and, and we both were working on lyrical themes together, and, and even I did some of the, the vocal melodies and, and cadences and lyrics and stuff, like normal. It's, it's the way we work, so... We've got about seven songs going, and uh, we're we're about halfway through the the writing process. We're going to do some of that stuff in person in Europe, which is going to be fun because it's been quite a long time since the band's done that. I I think maybe Dark Saga was the last album where we actually, you know, worked on the songs together as a band. Because since since then, we've been living in different parts of the country or the world, and you know, I usually do pretty detailed demos on my Pro Tools rig and send the stuff to the guys to learn. And then we, we sometimes we hash stuff out as a band. A lot of times in the past, it's just been me and the drummer going through, and we get the drum tracks down, and then we just start building it from there. So, <clears throat> but this is going to be a little bit, a little bit more like back to the roots this time. So we're we're excited about it. Wonderful. Now, I've heard some fantastic things so far. Um, you have had a couple of line-up shake-ups recently as well. Um, but I think I'm right in saying that actually the entire band now is really, really, really focused on writing this album together. Um, and so I've heard you really settle down with this line-up and you're finding that it just works really, really well together. Well, you know, I mean, it, things happen always in a band. And, uh, but, that, I mean, we're not... We're not really working on it together. We're going we're gonna to develop some of our ideas together. Um, but we, it's impossible for us to, to do it together, you know, because we live in different parts of the world. So that's what I'm saying. Stu and I went through the, the early, this early material. I'm going to continue to work here by myself, and then um, there will be a few songs where, where we actually get together and, and develop them in person. But most of the material is going to be ready to go by the time uh, we start practicing this summer. So. And do you have any kind of any song titles, any album name, anything that you can actually tell us about it at this stage? Um, I do, but I I need to put that out on our Facebook page in the, in the coming <laughs> week. So that's, yeah, that, I, always I worth a really... try, right? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Um, and yeah, it's been a very exciting day. You just announced um, a huge part one of a tour. 
um, where you just seem to be going absolutely everywhere. So, I mean, that's, that's fantastic news. We're all concerned. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good leg. I'm hoping they're going to add some more some more dates to it because there's uh, several territories there that I think are are missing compared to what we normally do in Europe. But also, I do know yeah. that, that that's not going to be our only sweep through Europe. So, you know, we're – the band is uh, – is really on fire and on the move, and we're we're doing a lot lots more touring than we have any time in the history of the band, and playing new markets all over the world and stuff. So, I think uh, I think it's realistic that that we'll be making at least uh, one more round through Europe besides this. That sounds really really good. Um, tantalizing snippets, of course. Um, is that going to be another headline tour, or are you possibly going to be uh, supporting somebody else? Um, very possibly a little of both. Very exciting indeed. <laughs> it's always, always a, yeah, always really, really good to, to have that kind of thing to look forward to. I know that we are really, really looking forward to getting you back in the UK. Um, and you've got quite a few festivals coming up over the summer as well, which of course is just going to be spectacular. So I think yeah, we'll that's where Eddie I'm actually telling management and, and my agent to back off because we have to write the <laughs> I'm like, look, guys, you know, a few festivals is cool, but the focus this summer needs to be a new album. So, yeah. So yeah, we're uh, we're. I'm telling him like, as of just a couple of days ago, okay, that's it, no more. Don't add anything else to the schedule. <laughs> but this is the priority of the new record. Yeah, and yeah, it's incredible that like, because you do just look as though you're going to be touring pretty much constantly for the next few months, as it is. And so, it's it's definitely going to be a tricky one to get the album out as well. But if anybody can do it, it's going to be you guys. Yeah, we can. We'll make it happen. That's, I'm I'm sure of that. You know, it's it's really a matter of that the the biggest thing is that the songs are up to par. And and once I feel like we've got the right length of album, we have the right quality of songs, then you know we're we're pretty fast from that point out. And like I said, I already have the album cover theme, and the, the art, artist is starting to develop my my concept this week. And you know, we we try to get a jump really early on that stuff so that when when it comes time, yeah. package basic layout and the packaging is really done and ready to go and then it's a matter of handing in the, the master and boom it's off it's off to the to the uh, manufacturer. Yeah. Wonderful. And what I mean obviously, you know, you have released so, so many wonderful albums with the band. Um is there anything that you think, you know, this is my least favourite part of the whole process, or do you generally find that each album presents a different set of challenges? Well that's kind of two different things. I mean there's there yes, every album ultimately presents a different set of challenges. I mean, you know, that's that's for sure. But then if there's something that I like more or not about the process, I mean I don't I don't really like doing promotion for the albums. <laughs> I don't like doing <laughs> I don't I don't really like doing long press days because yeah. it's uh it gets you know when you do so many interviews, if you're if you're on a long press tour and we're doing interviews from the time we wake up in the morning until we drop at night. Oh, really no, so much. Sometimes you get you get caught up in the middle of a sentence and you don't even know if you're repeating the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You just said, and it's it's like it's really difficult. It really takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus to stay on point through a through a really long press day. So that's probably you know, and, and it's al- almost always the same kind of question, so it, it can tend to get a little old. But I would say that is probably my. One of my least favorite things. I, I really don't like doing photo sessions. I don't, that's not not a favorite thing of mine. But you know, you, come, you know, come on. There's there's way worse jobs out there. So I'm not. I'm not <laughs> but you asked the question. But, but my favorite, clearly, my favorite part is the the writing and recording process because then the uh, the vision really becomes complete. And of course, the artwork. And once the package is done, then you know it's like a, a testament. You've accomplished something. Yeah, most definitely. And speaking of which, you've just had a live DVD brought out as well, which is absolutely spectacular. And so, you know, just just massive, massive congratulations on bringing out just a wonderful live DVD. Um, It was an incredible show all around that. But did you feel kind of when you were playing the show that there was a lot more pressure on because you knew you were filming it for a live DVD? Or are you so used to that kind of thing it just doesn't even factor in anymore? I I think... There was a little bit of that. I can't really speak for everybody. I mean, I, I think Luke was probably feeling a little, little more pressure than everybody else. Because, you know, <laughs> yeah. Big, big thing for him. And, uh, I mean, Stu was, 
it was also a big deal for Stu. But, I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we did – the thing is, the band has done so many shows, and we're such a well-oiled machine that I don't – for me personally, it's just – it was kind of another gig. It was not another – I don't mean to sound blasé about it, because it wasn't another gig. It was really special because of the – of the theater that we were in and the crowd and everything. Yeah. But, you know, you go up and you do your thing. I think that probably the, if there was anything that we were a little apprehensive about as a band was some of the songs we never got a chance to really play except more than maybe at one festival because we were, wow. we were out on the road and we, we had a couple of days of rehearsal. We were playing this two and a half, two hour and 45 minute, whatever it is, the show. And, you know, we couldn't obviously play in festivals through the, you know, on the weekends, you can't really uh, rehearse a lot of those songs because you may have 45 minutes at this festival, 60 minutes here, 75 there. So we had to, like, shake up the set enough, and, and we were all a little nervous that we were going to perform, you know, that we weren't going to really nail some of those songs that we, yeah. we just hadn't practiced them that much. But in the end, we did nail them. The only song that didn't make it was... Uh, End of Innocence, and we, we actually did two attempts at that, and we had some pretty serious technical problems, so we could not oh, salvage it. Yeah, yeah. That's just, that's sad, you know, but we'll, we'll do it on the next one. Brilliant, and so are you planning the next live DVD already, or is that going to go on the back burner for now? Well, we're talking about it. I mean, I think we're going to be filming pretty much every cycle from here on out. I mean, if, if the fans want it, and I think they do. I mean, I think that because of the, the big, rich catalog that I sort of has, there's so much that we can do yeah. on a tour yeah. cycle. And from a, from a live show perspective, you know, it's just a big catalog, and, and uh, there's fans of every era of this band. And there's, you know, yeah. I think a, a people would really dig us, you know, digging into records that we haven't done very much lately. And so, I mean, I think, obviously, this, this uh, Five and Ancient Korean is the most diverse set that we've played. Uh, probably in the band's history because the catalog's are much bigger now, and it's uh, you know I mean it's, it's a, there's a lot of material there, but still, you know you're always going to have people that why didn't you play this song? Why didn't you play that song? And, <laughs> yeah. And it's so you know when you have ten studio records out, there's a lot to choose from. <laughs> Not exactly a bad position to be in, really. No, it's it's good. It's just it does become more challenging. Yeah, oh, definitely. Trying to put together a 75 minute set when you've got, you know, 10 or 11, well, I'm working on 11 now, really popular records, then yeah. it's hard to figure out, okay, which ones can we do to try to make yeah. the best set. So. And how'd you go about choosing it? Um, the Corian set? No, just, just in general. I mean, what makes you there towards certain songs more to play certain gigs than others? I think it's, it's a, combination of things. I mean, obviously, it's always listening to the fans. That's the first thing. And then second is, what have we done on the last tour? What did we do on the tour before that? How many years has it been since we did this album or something from this album live? Um, no, I mean, it's it's that kind of thing. And that's obviously easier to do now that we are performing and behaving like a real band. You know, I mean, the, the last 10 years or so before Dystopia, the band really wasn't working. We weren't, we were, it was more of a hobby band. You know, we would do, yeah. we would do some shows, like some festivals or whatever, and then maybe we would go out for uh, a three or four week leg here in Europe, and then, you know, a year, year and a half later, we'd do a few weeks in the States or whatever. But it wasn't, it wasn't serious, and it was, it was really, well, it was serious, but it wasn't like full on active, yeah. you know, justify all of the costs that it takes to do proper rehearsals. Yeah. Um, especially if you're doing things like Dante's Inferno or, you know, if we bring back Gettysburg in the set or any of these really big epic things that take quite a bit of rehearsal to nail it down, you know, there was a period there where we just didn't, we weren't working enough to justify all that. And when you have people scattered all over the country, or in this case now all over the world, you really have to make it worth your while to, to set up a, you know, an eight to ten day pre-production before a world tour. It's a good investment if you're going to, yeah. if you're doing a world tour. You know, if you're just doing a few weeks or if you're doing a few festivals, you can't justify that kind of cost. So you yeah. really, you go and you, and you try to keep the set more simplified and you try to do songs that, you know, it's only going to take a day or two to get the band tight and that kind yeah. of stuff. I mean, those are, the, those are the type of decisions that go into it. But now that we're, you know, we're really working like a real heavy metal band and uh, it makes it 
easier to justify really digging into that, that, that catalog and committing to, okay, we're going to make this happen this time. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I saw you guys, the last time I saw you was at Bloodstock Festival last year, um, which I think was one of Luke's first shows with you. And, you, you know, you looked so tight and so together as a band man. I'm guessing that from your point of view, lineup-wise, this is it, and you're just really, really happy with where things are. I'm sorry, say the last part again. Oh, sorry. I'm guessing, um, you know, after having after having seen you, uh, that you're just really, really happy with the way things are lined up wise at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's, and certainly then it was good. So yeah, I mean, I'm uh, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. Brilliant. Um, well, sadly, I think I'm going to have to let you go now. Um, but it has it has been all too brief and an absolute pleasure to be able to talk to you. Um, we are really, really, really looking forward to seeing you back here in Europe in whatever guise it's in, whether it's um, on the headline tour, as a support for somebody else, or doing something completely different. Um, and, yeah, there's so much to look forward to from you guys. So we will really, really look forward to speaking to you again soon. All right. Sounds good. Take care, Thank you so, so much.